It's week four of the NFL. Here's Will Lutz ready to get this one started. And off we go to wrap up the week on a Monday night. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They'll be led out by the number one overall pick back in 2020 from LSU. It's Joe Burrow. And he's playing at a very high level here in this early part of the season. In fact, he leads the NFL in passing yards. Now, that's not always an indicator of success. And now off to the races down the right side. Inside the 20. Touchdown, Falcons. A big play there with his first career. First down. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Here's Burrow. Throwing right, and that's complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. First down, they'll go to the ground attack. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gain of just one. The Falcons at two and one now to start the campaign. And they were looking good until last week's loss took him from the ranks of the unbeaten. Yeah, I don't think anyone was expecting this team to push the 72 Dolphins, but still, you guys have a lot of positives from this first month. If they can bounce back and move to three and one, They'll be pretty well set up for the remainder of the season to follow. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 28. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. These two teams, they met up earlier in the year, back in week two. It was the Falcons getting the road victory in that one, so they'll look to finish off the season sweep here in Atlanta. Burrow on play action. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. I love those corners who can not only cover, but don't mind getting a little physical as well. How about the coverage on that play, knocking that pass away? They go play action with Burrow. He's got his target. That's complete. And they got it inside the 10 at the 8. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That's the number two receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage. And tell you what, a few more plays like that, he won't be number two for long. Well, that's what often happens when you have competitors running around the field. These guys know where they stand and relax. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Jamal Chip. Start on the ground here on first down. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. That's a lot of the runners getting this, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out of here and take on the down they'll go to the ground attack and he works his way forward to pick up four yards there second down now you look at the saints defense 
There are 32 teams in the NFL, and they're just better than 50% of them at defending the pass number 16 in the league. And it's really difficult to prepare for this team. This and now the rookie screen. Touchdown, Falcons. A great effort there. His second touchdown of the season. As his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. Extra point. And it's 21 to 3. 21 to 3 is your score after one. Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football. As they've got it as we resume action. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The New Orleans offense set to take over. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Carr now on first down. His throw incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Connection made with Chanel. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. The offense on third down tonight, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and two. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the uh, field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. He'll look to set up his blockers. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. So here are the Falcons to take over on offense. They're looking to bounce back following the loss to Miami a week ago, and they've got the lead right now as they come up with a first and 10. Now Burrow. Looking for Chase on the out route. He's got him. And he goes out right around the 39. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. It's now second and six. Burrow will throw. Another one into the hands of Jamar Chase. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Now they go play action now. Burrow. Going down the middle, and it's complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. The end result, 21 yards. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Again, it's Burrow. To the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. The way he's been slinging in the first half, you expect everything he throws to go for a touchdown, but I guess he's got to wait to try and pick up that third, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he had him for a second, but you're right not to be. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. A great play there. His second rushing touchdown on the year. And the Falcons are able to add on to their first half lead. 
Well, fair to say they've got something here in this rookie running back, and he's in for the second time of the ball game. And Brandon, it's a position where there's often a lot of turnover, a lot of competition at that spot. But he's proven to them that he wants to be the bell cow guy that his franchise can rely on. Coup now for the point after. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. So the drive there took six plays. And the camper that put it in the end zone, a run of eight yards. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Set to take over once again. Out comes the Saints offense. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Snap will come from the 31 on second and seven. On play action, now Carr. And he's got his man on the out route. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. A gain of 14. And the Saints first down. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. Oh, and the throw led him too much that time. It's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. On the counter, here's Williams. Shoves him aside. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Over the middle, it's complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 21. First down. On play action, it's Carr. And yeah, this one almost intercepted. Had a chance to come down with it in the end zone, but could not hang on. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. But it looked like a march to the end zone is in a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. So no problems at all on that one. And, and you know, there's virtually no win. This is a kicker's dream here tonight. It absolutely is, isn't it? So to me, with no win, it should be a passer's dream as well, yeah. right? But in this case, the defense held out. They had to force the field goal. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Holding offense. Come on, baby. We got to do our job. We got to do our job, man. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy, no matter what. There he goes, left side. He's to the 20. Touchdown, Falcons. A big play there. On his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns. And the Falcons are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. 
He's been having a great game, and that one right there, his best run so far, and it ends with six points. And not only that, in his mind, what is he thinking? Can I get to 200 yards as well? Because he knows he's closing in on it. He may not know the exact number, but the best runners have a feel of what the yardage is that they're compiling, and he knows that he's getting close to that 200-yard mark now. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And the route is on here in this first half. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't <laughs> happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. They were in the top five in sacks in the league coming into this one. That's their third one in this game. Obviously, pass rush has been a strength of this team all year long. And apparently, they're not satisfied with top five. They want to climb that ladder. Yeah, I think it goes back to their offseason. They decide to make it a priority, and it's working out. Under pressure, and they got to him again. The sack there by Roquan Smith. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. The offense on third down tonight, just one for five to this point. This will be third and forever. Now Carr. Alave holds it in. They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. You can see the time and effort and thought that they've put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Taken right around the 44. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. Well, the Falcons are set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. Might he be on his way to a record-setting performance here, Charles? Second quarter and the yardage number already ridiculous. And they always talk about just focusing on the next play. But sometimes it's okay to dream big yeah, because I'm they... focusing on the fourth quarter already. I... <laughs> Listen, I don't blame you, though, because we could be witnessing some type of history here, and it's being done by him. And, of course, the big guys up front who are creating the holes for him to run through. Yeah, they've all been good so far. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. And this pass broken up. And the contact low time there. And now fourth down. Well, partner, given where that drive started, that's an excellent job defensively to force them into fourth down. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And this punt sails over the sideline. And the spot, it looks to be right at the 25-yard line. On first and 10, here's Carr. And that'll be caught downfield by Chanel. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Carr now on first down. It's caught. It's Chanel again. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. First down, Saints. Into the red zone, it's Carr. That is caught by Alave. Touchdown, New Orleans. A 
a 20-yard touchdown. And the Saints get a bit closer. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Taking it about the one. Oh, good looking return set up here. He's past the 30. He will score. Touchdown, Falcons. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge him. Kick it to him. The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blow when he gets a full head of steam, and he got a full head of steam there. Two able to connect on the extra point, and the route is on here in this first half. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. And the Saints offense going to head out now late in this first half. And with a little under a minute remaining, they may try to put something together here just to try to cut into that deficit. Throwing on first down is Carr. Finding Williams on the check down. A short game here, maybe a yard to the 29. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted but it winds up falling incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. 35 seconds, all that remains in the first half as they come up on first down. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around the NFL. We'll get started up at Paycor Stadium in Cincinnati, where it was the Bengals who were able to pick up the victory at home. Joe Mixon, a touchdown run in the victory. From there, we head over to the West Coast. Check out the Niners at home at Levi Stadium. And they were winners in that one as they defeat the visiting Seattle Seahawks. Christian McCaffrey, two touchdown runs to lead the way. Finally, let's get to the country music capital of the world and see what's happening with the Titans at home in Nashville. And they were losers in that game as they fall to the visiting Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes, five touchdown passes, leading his guys to the victory. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. The Saints going to go on offense first, and they trail here as we begin quarter number three. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. 
And he'll return this one all the way onto the other side of the field. During the week, the special teams coach puts together a game plan that he presents to the head coach. And in every game plan, there's one big play that he points to the head coach and says, listen, when we need it, we can go to it. I think they did exactly that on that one. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They start the second half here with Williams. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. And a second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. Car going to throw. Him and it's incomplete. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. They had no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. Well, it's hard to imagine the first half going any better for them, CD. And now here as they begin their first series of the second half, I mean, they score here. This one, it's pretty much out of reach. We honestly might already be at that point, partner, because this team, they were dominant in the first half, continue to be dominant now. And I think they're viewing this as a put-away drive on their way to a lopsided victory. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Gets this one quickly out wide. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. From the 41, here's second and a yard. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. 201 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Burrow looking to pass. That is incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. He needed three, he got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Second down and four. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. Now a play fake. Carr. Looking left side, and it's complete. He's still on his feet. He may go. Touchdown. A great effort there. 87 yards. And the Saints are able to cut into that deficit. Well, if they're going to make a game of this in the second half, they need a few big plays to go their way. That's one. And the way to get it done is to also conserve time. So to your point, that big
big play right there. Now you're not moving the ball downfield, taking time off the clock. You're leaving yourself a better avenue to continue to try and make a comeback. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Still operating with a comfortable lead despite the score a moment ago as they begin first and ten. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Right about 20 yards on the pickup. Well, officially, they'll say it's going to go for 19. This is just more of the same. This defense has had no answer on a lot of these throws. They've let these receivers run wild. And here's another completion for good yardage. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Now it's Burrow. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Throwing it a traffic there, and that's complete. Five yards, now it's third and five. Now Burrow. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 22-yard line. 18 yards, a big pickup there on third down. And Burrow going to throw again. And he's going to hook up with his big tight end, complete. So five yards here, five on the play. And that will bring up second down. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. Off the play fake, here's Burrow. Touchdown, Falcons! From 17 yards out as his guys were able to push that lead out a bit further. So another touchdown there, and even though we're still just here in the third quarter, kind of hard now to see them giving up this lead. And this is just an offense that's imposing its will right now. You name it, they're able to do it. If you're the play caller, whatever you want to select is there. You want to run it, you want to throw it, pick a play, any play. They're rocking and rolling right now. Now young Ray Koo for the extra point. And that'll push the lead up to 29 now. So that lines up a seven-play drive all to And the end result in Atlanta touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. The New Orleans offense set to take over. A strong showing their last time out. They scored the touchdown, but Charles, they look up, and they're still down double digits, so you feel like just to keep pace, this drive probably needs to end in the end zone as well. Yeah, and I think the best move for them is to not worry about how far they are down on the scoreboard, but to just remember the last drive and how it ended. Go ahead and try and repeat that. Then you can look at the scoreboard and see where this game is. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. To throw, it's Carr. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. My oh man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night.
They give it to Williams, running right. And he'll take this one up to about the 23. 56 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Here comes the Saints punter now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. They'll call that a 33-yard punt with no return. And it will be Falcon football. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. The partner's a former defensive back. I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now, but let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass, obviously. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Big play there on the catch and run. 59 yards. And what a let down after a huge play. He's going to pull this in and then set sail for the end zone. And he nearly made it, too. But he's going to be tracked down just short of the goal line. So a big play there that's going to set him up with first and goal at the one-yard line. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Here's Burrow. This to Pitts, and he's got him. Touchdown, Atlanta. Kyle Pitts with an amazing diving catch. And the Falcons have taken a five-touchdown lead. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary a clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. On second down, Williams. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Five yards, now it's third and five. Card out of throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. The car's throw caught by Olave. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. He was trying to get that one out to his running back out of the backfield, but that one was read and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. On second down, here's Carr. And his throw is incomplete. 
A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Throwing his car on third down. And that is incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. That is caught, and he is going to have the Saints first down as they manage to convert, and that'll keep the drive alive. First down, New Orleans. Now, Carr again. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Just looking at it from a defensive perspective, when you break the huddle in the red zone, tight end is one of the guys you've got a key on because quarterbacks want the ball of their hands fast in this position, and they want to get it to someone. And in this case, he had the play. They just didn't complete it. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Now Carr. And he's wrapped up. Taken down. Back at the 25. Disrupting that play and dropping him was Arnold Ebikati. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational. CD, that is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack is a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. Now Carr, got to have this one. Looking downfield, and that's caught right side. He's got his man. Now, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Williams will struggle to get to the line of scrimmage as he'll be tackled back at the four-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Williams again. And he'll be stopped up short as the tackle is made at about the three. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Miller. And he is going to lose yardage here. A rough go there on third down. A loss of four. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. A yeah, field goal does you no good so they're going to stay out there and go for it on fourth. As expected they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert and they turn it over. They had the play call on fourth and goal, but it's dropped in the end zone. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth. And we've seen him do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. 210 yards on the ground for him now as he's gotten better, really, as the night's going on. Hands it off out of the gun. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 25 yards, the pick up there, and also a first down. The carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, Keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. 
Ball spotted at the 45. Here's a second and eight. One back in the backfield. He'll get the carry. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from walking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. There's a beautiful throw there, and he's been sensational the entire game and moving it around, spreading it, hitting the right guys. And look, under normal situations, partner, I would expect him to come out of the game now. They've got it in hand. But you and I have been around this league a long time, and every time we ask head coaches about it, hey, why don't you take your quarterback out when the game's in hand? They just kind of give us that look like that's what he's paid to do. So it's a very unusual situation. I'd want him out. They tend to leave him in. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. The 22 is the line to gain here on third down. Now it's Burrow. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, Brandon, nothing but praise for me for this offense. They have been tremendous all night long. They knew what they had to do to unlock the defense. And let's face it, this has been a master class in offensive football that we've been here to witness. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. On three-yard pickup, brings up second and seven. There they'll keep leaning on the running game, back to the ground. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And it was a game where they were off and running in the first quarter, Charles, and never looked back. You know, partner, after a while, we always say the same thing, don't we? They set the tone early, right? They started fast. So I asked a few of my horse racing friends, do you have a term for me that we can use to cover that? And they said, yeah. When a horse breaks out like that, you say he caught a flyer out of the gate. And that's exactly what this team did today. I mean, they jumped out there, jumped on them, and were never headed. So for the Falcons, they're on a nice early roll as they move to 3-1 and one with a win here. And they'll get to stay home again next week. Meanwhile, for the Saints, they'll sink now to 0-4. And, and they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on ESPN.